Welcome back to The Trade. I'm Gina Beck. This is Drew Williams. Thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We appreciate y'all, especially the reviews on Apple Podcasts. It really means a lot. Yeah, and like always, thank you again for the continued support, the continued engagement, and the hashtag Banana Cats. And subscribing on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you're subscribing over there. Thank you so much. It yeah, really the iHeartRadio, all the Stitcher too. Thank you guys. We You're always under thanked, and we do see you guys. Thank you. Yeah, just saw some recent reviews. It, it was nice to see those. We got to catch up on those, by the way. I think next episode we'll read. Yeah, absolutely. Some reviews and comments. Yeah, um, absolutely. You guys have been leaving. How are you, Drew? All right, G. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Excited to jump into this podcast. Uh, but we have a lot of crazy stuff to talk about. Like, by the way, guys, this is an uncensored episode. If it doesn't say in the title for some reason. This is an uncensored episode, so we are saying what we want without censoring it, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, because we have a lot of crazy, I'm going to say it, we have a lot of crazy shit to talk about. Yeah, there's there's no way to be around it and to try and scoot around pretending what's going on. These are, these are all three crazy stories. So, to begin with... Definitely not the craziest, but it's it, it's in my area, so I really wanted to talk about it. This was in the Tri City Herald. Uh, an ex CIA agent drugged, raped dozens of women, and now FBI wants the public's help. So I don't want to read this whole article because you guys can obviously read it for yourselves in the description below. But I want to talk about some key things. I guess the former CIA agent, his name is Brian Jeffrey Raymond. He's 45, and he's the one that's accused of drugging and sexually assaulting dozens of women for 14 years. The FBI is asking for information about him from the public. His face will definitely be in the thumbnail. Like I said, we're going to leave the article in the description below, so you guys can click on it if you guys want to see more pictures of his face, because they provide a couple of them for you in the article. Yeah, absolutely. It's a crazy story. But it says here that I guess I guess how like it was found out is a naked hysterical woman was like screaming for help on the balcony of an apartment in Mexico. It led investigators to nearly 500 photographs and videos of half-dressed unconscious women belonging to a former CIA agent which is Brian Jeffrey. And he's a turned foreign service officer. So, I mean, he's just, it's just crazy how people in that, like, with that job, we find out this crazy stuff about them. Goes to show, like, all the time what we say, it can be anyone. And especially people who, I feel like, feel like they have some sort of power. Yeah. Whether it's social media government or in even a workplace it doesn't even have to be something with a big label it could just be you're the head manager of a grocery store you know you feel like you have some kind of power over people that work under you and then you want to take advantage of that that's just not okay yeah it's uh i'm interested to see what comes of more of that story because i'm sure there's much more to all of that like it's it sounds like it sounds like something should be in a movie it definitely definitely does and like it all began on dating apps he met most of them (laughs) dozens on the dating apps over the course of 14 years and he was arrested last year he pleaded guilty in july to several federal charges including two counts of sexual abuse court documents show he's scheduled to be sentenced february 7th coming up in the interim investigators are asking anyone who believes they may have been a victim or who otherwise has information about him to come forward again his name is brian jeffrey raymond 
and the picture is in the thumbnail and it will be in the description when you click the link. Yeah, they'll definitely be there. I'll make sure. Um, there'll be links to all these crazy stories we like we always leave. Um, did they have anything else to say about him in that article? A lot. I mean, it just talks about specifically the women and uh, I could I could go over some. I mean, specifically the apps. One of them was a Tinder account uh, and also social media profiles like on Facebook, Instagram, etc. The search of his devices produced multiple disturbing discoveries, starting with internet searches for passed out black girl, passed out and Ambien at various points in 2010, 11, and 2020. Agents said they also found 478 pictures and videos of the unconscious women uh, in various states of being undressed. Prosecutors said sexual abuse occurred from 2006 to May 2020 when Raymond was arrested in Mexico. During that time, Raymond is accused of going on dates with women and recording them, often naked or partially naked while they're unconscious. And he was also seen touching the women in many of the videos, which investigators said were recorded in several different countries, sometimes at embassy leased housing. And the list of locations where the videos and pictures were taken includes Mexico, California, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and four unnamed countries identified in court documents as country three, four, five, and six. At least 24 different women were observed in the recording, several of whom investigators interviewed. Prosecutors said in documents accompanying Raymond's plea agreement, none of those women who spoke with law enforcement knew they had been recorded. So court documents state, nor did any of them consent to sexual activity. All of the women interviewed described drinking alcohol supplied and or prepared by Raymond and experiencing memory loss during their time with Raymond. It is, it's just a lot of, uh, it's, it's just a patterns, a lot of patterns. He a lot would of do patterns it to same and women. so many levels of being just sick. He also, he admitted to the recording in pho uh, photographs of the unconscious women in nude or partially nude. And he also admitted to touching their breasts and butt and genitalia while they were incapable of consent. So he admitted that. And he also agreed to pay $10,000 in restitution to every victim identified in the recordings and will be required to register as a sex offender for life. And that money seems like a slap in the face to those women. That's really gross. As part of the agreement, prosecutors proposed a guideline range between 21 and 28 years in federal prison as punishment. Defense attorneys for Raymond proposed a sentence between 11 and 14 years. And that's when he also agreed to pay the $10,000 to each of them. But they are looking for more information. They're looking to see if there's any more victims. 14 years is a long time, and especially with all the different areas he was in, apps can reach a lot of people. Especially and then the connections he had too. Like he, that's uh, that's scary. Right. So that pretty much sums up, Mister Raymond. I want to talk about an article that uh, it's a situation I'm sure by the time we release this will be much bigger. Um, I found the actual local article. A lot of them, I think the titles are very clickbaity, but they're not. 100% wrong, but I'm going to read the most local report that I found. This is from WRD Fox of Louisville, Kentucky. Hazard High School investigating man pageant event with lap dances and Hooters outfits. A Kentucky school district confirmed on Wednesday it is an investigating social media posts of an homecoming event showing male teenagers in skimpy clothing giving lap dances to school staff, including the principal. Social media, media posts emerging from the Hazard High School in Hazard, Kentucky, show teenage boys giving lap dances to staff, which has prompted outrage from parents on social media, social media according to Lexington Herald. There's a quote here. The incident is under investigation and you know anything under investigation I can't really talk about. Hazard Indi uh, Independent Superintendent Sandra Combs told the Herald Leader 
without describing the photos. Once the investigation is complete, appropriate action will be taken. The photos were posted on Hazard High School's athletic Facebook page, but have since been removed. The principal of the school, Donald Happy Mobellini, was photographed in the picture and is also the town's mayor. Other photos from the event showed teenage girls parading around the gym in Hooters waitress costumes. The homecoming event listed to occur on Tuesday on the Hazard High School's Facebook page was referred to as a man pageant. Public education is under so much fire right now. Nima Bruner, a co-founder of the Public Education Group by Kentucky 120 United, said about the photos, This kind of stuff is not helpful. In fact, it's disgusting. It appears they are sexualizing young adults. Both Principal Mobellini and Hazard School District Board did not immediately respond to request Fox News, which they're not going to. But um, we'll leave links to this. And... I wouldn't say that it like the other titles that I read, they like said drag show and things like that. To me, this looks more like, um, uh, I would, I would maybe, maybe they're gay boys, but they just look like, like the jock type kids in school, um, wearing swimsuits and stuff like that. And they were, they were given the principal, like a jokingly lap dance. I don't know how else to say that without sounding weird, but. I don't think it was like um, like with Desmond where they were like, I don't think it was the same situation like that, but it's definitely super inappropriate. Like, and of all places to be like somewhere in Kentucky, I would expect that like somewhere out of like my state. And are there kids watching this too, you know? Well, there was a whole, the whole, it was a homecoming event. So the entire high school okay, was. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, that's very inappropriate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not a good look for anybody. Um I don't like when they try and paint it like some anti drag thing and I don't really think that's what it was. Uh, the Hooters yeah, costumes right. a little questionable too, is a little weird. Like I don't I don't know if my high school even public would have been okay with that for like the event. But high schools are crazy these days. <sighs> Not everything is, you know, meant for homecoming. Not everything right? is like meant it, for kids, even high schoolers. Especially homecoming. Like, that is such a tradition. Why <laughs> try to bring anything else into that? I mean, I that principal slash mayor is probably going to have to resign. Like, wow. it's not a good look for anybody that was involved. Our last story, do you, do you want to take the reins on this one? You're the one that found it. You want to talk about how you found it? Yeah. Um, the story is actually about 10 years old. Um, but it just it's a good example of just how different the world is on one part of the globe and how something like, you know, such such it was so massively big there, but not like a drop of anyone talking about here. But 10 years ago, there was a man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look how to say his name properly. His name was Song Shanmu, and he was a Chinese national that was another man super connected, very much like our first story, who was running a, it was an English training center that was called like Sun Moon something, where he would hire all of these young rural like country girls and there's no other way to put it around it he was raping all these women he was doing it he was getting away with it for years on end um i found out about this through a youtube channel that we'll link he's got two videos he actually um he was a bodyguard i want to say in quotes parentheses he's he wasn't a, like a like a solely he wasn't a real bodyguard but he did play that role for this guy and it's about 40 minutes and he has pictures of all the women they were forced to wear like um might even be in the thumbnail like kind of like skimpy uh stewardess outfits like airline stewardess outfits and that's only just that's that's nothing compared to everything else right oh yeah it's it get like that we're just touching like so he took pictures of all these women and would basically 
blackmail them into staying with him. Like it was almost like a cult. Like they had to bow right. to him. Um, and they, how he got them to his apartment, though, is he would ask them to come clean every single apartment. time. And so they would go there to clean and they'd start mopping or doing whatever that they had to do. And then he would come in and start taking advantage of them without consent. Well, there's even there's even worse parts. There was uh, the one that finally got him busted was the final one. She mm. was um, actually dating a foreigner. And it, there's two weird things that kind of saved her in some ways. She was called up there and she wanted to leave. And then he did a mock kidnapping. He like called like a thuggish guy and said he was going to have her kidnapped and all these type of things. And then she backed off and he ended up, I can't remember in the video if it was the same day or if it was like another time he ended up raping her. And basically the only reason why he got convicted is because she did it while she was on her period. Because in China, mm -hmm. that's like, like Unknown, culturally, yeah. like such yeah. a, like huge taboo. But it's okay for a rich man to have like a harem of sex slaves, apparently. Like, it's, but he did end up getting caught. It's another one but, of those. Oh, right. Yeah. To fast forward, though, when he got caught, and he had to explain uh, the whole situation, uh, having raped her on her period he said that it was consensual because he can't get off an orgasm unless the girl likes it and enjoys it and had said that he was better than her foreign boyfriend and yeah, a string of other weird. things a string of other things in order to get him to orgasm she had to be into it pretty much and so that's what kind of um was his argument yeah 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 he uh he's a real piece of shit i can say that openly on this episode um we will link um i'll link the article because he only spent four years in prison and there's a lot but he only did two did they even think it's less than that i was reading or less other... than two yeah, yeah i was like i was reading two. some other articles that were saying somewhere around six months and mm. then now he's just removed his face from because he he owns multiple companies like the and guy that, gave her six hundred dollars in U.S. cash. That's actually the right the the Chinese newspapers version trying to make it look like she got much. She actually got less. She got somewhere uh, around four hundred USD, which uh, is like you think the girls getting ten thousand was nothing. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> she was paid four hundred dollars for going through literal hell like it's and workers like that when you're in an environment where if you don't obey and do what is wanted of you you get fined and so in china you don't they're not making very much money and the money that they do make is all pro probably accounted for and going to their families and when they get fined, that is a lot of money that's getting taken from their families and they can't afford to have anything taken from them with how much they're making already. So they are very obedient workers. Well, they not do only what that, they're told. he would threaten their families personally because he had so many connections with everything. Like he was like trying to think of like the guy in the reference, like he's like Elon Musk famous in China. That's how famous he was. And he was... He wasn't a, a U.S. dollar billionaire, but he was a billionaire in um, – it's called Chinese R&B. Um, just comparing like how well known we know Elon is just by hearing Elon or Elon Musk. Like you know who that is, right? Well, when this guy's name is heard in China, it's just – it's the same. You know, it's the same. It's the exact same thing, and it, it just goes to show you that it's, it's not a Western problem. It's not a, a – american problem it there's weirdos everywhere like we say all the time it could be there's no need no need to compare no you know yeah there's it's weird just, there things happen there things happen here things happen everywhere yep yep and uh we will make sure i i really encourage you guys the video that uh he does it's not i wouldn't call it terribly graphic 
there's no like actual you know pictures of anything um you can kind of get it he does a good job i think in explaining the story and you get a lot of visuals too so yeah he actually lived there and he has pictures of i mean he absolutely worked for this guy and we will link also a few of the articles from when he got convicted and they, they they show him arrested and things like that so he he did get some punishment but not not that much and uh he's just living his life today just apparently uh he's just you know under the radar they don't put his face on anything anymore but he's got those multiple because he had what um the one that the video you guys if you guys do watch he worked for a company called ccvip and then there's the like sun moon english learning center or something like that language learning center he, he owns a bunch of stuff but very similar to elon musk how he has multiple multiple businesses and little empires the guy had the same thing going on over there yeah there's there's a lot that we didn't say here that you'll be able to find out in his video as well yeah we'd have to talk for 40 minutes like him to say <laughs> yeah. everything because there's just so much it's it's really a it's on the level of you know mr jeff e who uh who did not off himself and um uh, a little little bit of R. Kelly mixed in there. And then what was the other weird um the Keith uh the Nexum guy. Keith uh, R I always forget his last name. We just wanted to bring this to light on our platform because the more people that talk about it, I think the better. And it sounded like in his video he that's what he wanted is peop more people to know when to talk about this because it's like getting wiped off, or it has been wiped off the internet as he said uh, you can't really find much on this situation except for old 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 articles and maybe like two of them he said so i actually I have more, both of them we'll link them yeah more people talking about this and you know just knowing that things happen everywhere and it's not just the R. Kelly's of the world is not just the Weinstein's. It's not. It, it's not just like specific, well-known people. in here, it's there too. Yeah, you know? and it's scarier because that guy was government connected, and the government's helped cover up his crimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you can't find anything on it, and then they tried to copyright his video, mm -hmm. and that is a big tell. And I, it's just like. Yeah, because he used one clip from one of their CCP. Uh, 11 C seconds of it, which, yep. by the way, anyone listening, if you don't want to get copyrighted, you use, like, it's, like, six seconds or less. I yeah, think, the, I think it's six seconds or less, depending Minimum on... Minimum is six seconds. So if you don't want to get copyrighted, just don't use anything over six seconds. But at the same time, it was a manual review. So that means, like, a human had to have been, like, I want this down. Yeah, I mean the 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 government there is this is no no slight on Chinese. So people. it wasn't just like YouTube triggering the copyright. It was a human who was like, yeah, the CCP's. Yeah. I mean, they're all over that type of stuff, and they don't mm -hmm. like bad 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 propaganda. It's unfortunate because the Chinese people are awesome. They have some. Really... There's so much that I mean, from hearing his video, and how the news doesn't obviously talk about the negativity, like he said, mm -hmm. like the really bad stuff that happens. I mean, our news does, and it doesn't at the same time. They really pick and choose what they say, but they don't just cut off all negativity. They still give us drama and, like, things to feed off of. But it sounds like in China, like, they're just like, no, no. They don't want to anybody in positions that he's in probably to look bad at all, which will make China look bad, which make will make China look all these yeah, it other makes, types it makes the party look bad because they, they literally have a one party thing like so like, it's just crazy how different that is in our perspective to theirs where like we feed off that and they don't don't want to look bad you know they protect their image <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, i mean our our media censors some of the stuff that you know our cia and stuff like that does too but oh, nothing, definitely. nothing to the extent that's that, why like, i said they don't they're, they're not out here snitching on people but they do give us things to feed off of yeah. uh, and i mean 
we heard about Weinstein all over the media, R. Kelly all over the media, like we, Cosby all over the media. And yet this guy who is considered like an Elon Musk Not is like, whoop, wash clean, like, oh, protected. Like, I was okay. like I said, when I when I found it, I was like, this is story is like 10 years old. I've never heard this. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, you guys got to go check it out for yourselves. I think we'll end it here. Thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Until next time, Banana Cats. Love y'all. Banana Cats. Much love. Peace.